I, all I want to say is Gonzaga fans, I'm happy for you. And I know how hard it is to have to fight these battles, uh, you know, on the front and have these people come at you and come at your program and come at your players and yada, yada, yada. But you deserve this moment in time. And uh, I know you're going to play the, the most anticipated game since the 05 title game. The first time we've had the two top overall seeds beat in the title yeah. game. I think since this is more. I, I, can, I, can I stop you there? The, yeah. I, throw out 2005. This is more anticipated than 2005. I think this is more anticipated than 2005. I think, I think 2005 is just the marker in time that we haven't really stopped to, to compare the two. That yeah. we just know that like 2005 was the last one that was like super anticipated. Uh, well, to, to of this... course, we, we, we don't have, I mean, I just said that for, for the statistics. No, I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you. I'm saying this is, this is, this has been the narrative all season. We, I mean, we've talked yeah. about like, even all, when we're doing our tier talk with Andy, Andy Katz, it's always been like, uh, two, uh, we, we've mentioned 2005, God knows how many times on the show. Yeah, so many like, times. That's why like, I thought Illinois was going to win it all. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but, but I'm saying, I don't think we've really stopped to like to flesh this out. Uh, to, to, I, I think this is more anticipated in 2005. I think it is because they were supposed to play in Indianapolis. They didn't. They've been one, one and two. Gonzaga has been one literally the entire season has the not lost. There, yeah. There's an undefeated uh, uh, season on the line now on Monday night. Um, Baylor obviously has been two for most of the season. Their, their hiccup, even, even the hiccups that they had, you can kind of blame on COVID. And I don't even know if it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's, the, the 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 problems that they had were were post covid and it seems like they've figured those out so like i don't know maybe there's a there's there's a world where mm -hmm. baylor doesn't have to take a covid pause they're also undefeated we don't even have to play in the what ifs though because they are who they are and who they are is a very very good basketball team that we've seen all year and we've had circled as one of the top two teams in the country uh i think this is more anticipated in 2005 and I, especially after tonight because we got exactly what we needed tate yeah exactly yeah. what we needed we needed gonzaga to look susceptible to, to, for, mm. for guys like me who have believed heavily in them to say, oh, oh, okay. And we needed Baylor to look awesome. That's exactly what happened. Now, you know, if, 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 if Gonzaga was going to play Baylor tonight, I would have been pretty confident Gonzaga was going to win. I would have yeah. been pretty confident. Now, after what I witnessed tonight, I, I don't know where I'd land. And that's mm -hmm. all I've ever wanted was like, I yeah. needed a reason to believe that Gonzaga could lose even if they play well. And oh my God, I got it tonight. That's so, I'm, I could not be more excited for Monday. When we came into the day, you and I looked at each other, best case scenario. And this tournament, you and I have called a Mickey Mouse tournament as a, as a meme the entire time because every time we say what we want to happen, the literal opposite usually happens. Yes. So we come in today, we say we need Baylor to for, for the best case title. So this is not about fandom. This is about best case title scenarios. That's what yep. you and I care about. We came in and we said we need Baylor probably to blow out Houston to get us like fired up about the idea that Baylor has a real shot against Gonzaga and we need UCLA to keep it within 10 was pretty much what you and I had said to each other. And the fact that UCLA takes them to overtime, the fact that they had chances to win this game down the stretch. Yep. Yep. And on the flip side, I have to say this because I, as I was making my Gonzaga point, I got too lost in all the historical stuff of Gonzaga, but I want to say this team has not played a close game all year. And yeah. the fact that they were in a close game, the fact that they were able to respond, the fact that they never panicked, the fact that Mark Few obviously has coached these guys situationally to know how to handle these moments without having them actually play in these moments. Mm -hmm. One says a lot about preparation of this team, and two says a lot about preparation and mentality of these players themselves. Because I'm not going to lie to you, Titus. If I'm undefeated in Indiana with all of the history behind me in Bob Knight State, mm -hmm. thinking about the 1976 Hoosiers and seeing a team like UCLA with John Wooden and John Wooden Broden statues behind all, <laughs> all around you. I, As you're I'm driving into Lucas Oil, you're driving downtown, you see I'm, the, the John Wooden I'm freaking Wooden out. I'm freaking yeah. out. I'm getting tight, and I'm, and I'm concerned. And give Corey Kisper, give True Timmy, give Ayayi, give Suggs, uh, I mean, Nimhard, all those guys credit because they never faltered. They never wavered. They continued to fight despite all the things going against them. And also kudos to the coaching staff because that is coaching. That is getting yeah. players prepared to be in a fight. And, you know, I don't think Gonzaga went in this game thinking it's going to be an easy game. You know, as much as everyone in America is like, it's going to be a 10, 15 point blowout. They probably, yeah, I mean, me like, too. What do you, like, yeah. I, I raised my hand, of course. It was a 14 was point spread. Vegas thought up. that. I said on part of my take, uh, and I quote, no chance. <laughs> hey, well, you no were right. You you, Which, by the way, right. uh, I was right. You know, it's a, it's a, they, they did not win. I knew, uh, I, I crunched all the numbers. This was yeah. the, uh, this was one of the situations I saw. This was but one give of the, kudos to Gonzaga, because as yeah. we move to Monday, I'm hoping that we get another tight game, another close game. And uh, I, I know Baylor can execute in those moments. Obviously, they've had some games this season where we've had to see that. Gonzaga, we hadn't had that. And now we do have actual mm -hmm. tape on them being able to handle it. 
And uh, I mean, I think it makes Monday even more anticipated. I think it makes it even more fascinating. And I just want to see what the line is, Titus. Not that I really care about betting lines, but it's more just to see what they think. What's the Gonzaga, vibe? Yeah, it's yeah, the, yeah. Not the what, line, What the did vibe. this game do to Vegas and their expectations right. and their view of Gonzaga? Because for me, I think going into it, if they win this game by 12, 15 points, you're looking at like a seven and a half point line or something like that. But now we're looking closer, like two and a half, three and a half, hell, even yeah. one and a half. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I like it. That's what I'm, I'm curious as well. I don't care about the, the line for gambling purposes. I care about it as a vibe, as I said. Yes. Like, I just yes. want to know. What is America vibing right now? What, yeah. what are we thinking? What are the experts because saying? I don't know what I think anymore. And that's that's a good spot to be in. Usually I don't like that, but when it comes to this matchup, I like that a lot. I like that oh. I have no idea what the hell I'm thinking. Uh- hey there. Thanks for watching Titus and Tate. For the full friend of the program experience, subscribe right below and come join us for all things college basketball. The action is heating up. Come join Titus and Tate.